I was not emotionally ready for this episode. What's up everybody, Pepper in here, bringing you another Attack on Titan, where we discuss Attack on Titan. And there is a lot to discuss this week, holy crap. Tons of twists and turns in one moment that I was not ready for. I carried a lot of dread app about potentially happening, you know exactly what that moment was. Um, I didn't know who it was going to be, but I, I felt like something like this was coming. They had it too good for too long, um, but without spoiling too much, um, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, but let's just get into the video. Last week, the assault on Marley reached its climax and set up a potential final confrontation between Aaron and Reiner. I said last week I didn't think that Reiner would win this fight, and yeah, he went down in a single punch. Aaron had both him and Galliard right in front of him, and Reiner having snatched Galliard away from him, but told Mikasa that he reached his limit. She repeats herself that he needs to come home, and the escape blimp picks them up. I think he may have acted differently if he truly knew what little willpower Reiner had, but just didn't want to risk a prolonged fight with him and getting greedy. I'm pretty sure though that eating the Warhammer Titan itself and not giving that power to one of the uh, other Paradisians means Aaron himself wants to eat all the titan shifters not exactly sure why maybe he doesn't trust anybody else with those powers um, maybe his ultimate goal of destroying all titans hasn't changed and he thinks having less titan shifters walking around is going to serve that goal better i mean unless he has a way to permanently keep those abilities from passing on then it doesn't really matter when he dies random eldians around the world will be born with those powers that seems like a super temporary solution but with four years of planning and having better access to an understanding of his ability to access his predecessor's memories i'm sure that if this is what he's trying to do he's already thought of that maybe having a single titan shifter eat all the others affects it not sure actually i just thought of a theory regarding that let me know in the comments if you want to see a video regarding my theory about Aaron and why he's what he's trying to do and why. I'm anime only, but I feel like we can get a pretty good idea of his overall goals just based on what we've seen so far. Maybe even where the series is going as a whole. Anyways, Gabby sees that they're retreating and gets pissed. She chases after the blimp with her rifle and screams she's going to kill Aaron Yeager. I'm getting strong season 1 Aaron vibes from her and that seems 1000% intentional. She is definitely more talented than Aaron was at that age, but I have to say their personalities are like carbon copies of each other, not to mention their overall traumatic experiences. Falco chases after her and tries to stop her, but she is dead set on what she is about to do. She tells Falco that her entire life she's tried to work so hard to show the world that Eldians can be good people, remembering getting spit on whenever she left the internment zone, and she feels like Aaron and Paradise have, done, have undone all that hard work. And Falco remembers what Aaron told Reiner right before he transformed and the question of why was my mom eaten by a titan? And he quickly realizes what all this is and how Marley had this coming to them for a long time. From that little bit of dialogue, by his initial outburst of hating and wanting to kill Aaron and the Eldians from Paradise, he comes to understand that this is revenge. And he kind of explains this to Gabby while she's screaming at him, asking why all this had to happen. He tells her they were trampled and that this is revenge and you can perfectly see Gabby's state of mind here and how her mind is shutting out anything that contradicts what she feels like she has to do right now. She asks him did you see it which of course Falco hasn't so he has to answer no which Gabby replies me neither. Meanwhile on the airship we have John and a transfer from the garrison uh, covering for the blimp. The transfer tells him he'll cover it, he'll guard the blimp and tells John to get back up. John joins back up with Sasha and Connie. Bonnie tells them both that they're very special to him, kind of embraces them in a hug, and just, man, the red flags they're throwing out are freaking glowing right now. They learn that the six foot tall, uh, the six foot tall, it's not even in here. They learn that six total Paradisians died in the assault, which compared to Marley is a huge victory. That being said, any loss of life should be mourned, and John is visibly upset that they lost anybody at all. Aaron boards the ship, uh, Armin helps him up, and without hesitation, Levi freaking bodies Aaron and slams him up against the wall. He's having none of his shit today. And in my episode 4 of 6 review, I said that it seemed like Paradise wasn't fully on board with Aaron's plan, that he'd maybe been away for some time, and I was it seems like I was right about that. While they did end up doing what Aaron wanted, and followed his plan with the letters he sent, um, it's revealed that they didn't want this at all, and basically Aaron forced their hand by leaving Paradise and going to Marley, um, to force them to come rescue him, because he has the Founding Titan, and they don't want Marley or anyone else getting a hold of it. He knew how important he was, and used that against them to force him into a position they did not want to be in. However, I do think what Eren did ultimately was the right course of action, because as we saw in episode 405, right at the very end there, 
He literally burst through the stage as Willy Tiber was declaring war on paradise, rallying the entire world together. So, you know, I, I, I don't think there was any way to avoid a conflict with Marley, and this way they were able to deal a decisive blow, which Aaron states should buy them some time. They've completely crippled Marley's naval and even military capabilities for the time being, having taken out the top brass and the fleet along with their port. That being said, well, the extent of the damage I think Marley was completely unprepared for, they did have the foresight to put their most incompetent generals in the way of Aaron, but we'll see how well this pays off for them. I think the planning they put, did put into this is the only reason Marley is still standing and will recover despite how severely they underestimated Paradise. At any rate, the Scots have completely lost their faith in Aaron, and Levi just lets him have it, telling him he smells like shit, telling him he has the same empty look on his face as the people from the underground. Um, they hold him at gunpoint while tying him up. He's basically under arrest. Gabby sees Lobot, the garrison transfer who stayed below the airship, and manages to get a headshot on him while she's sliding as he's zipping around. Pretty insane when you think about it. Lobot falls to the ground, and Gabby quickly figures out how to use the ODM gear to get up to the ship, since everything's still attached. Um, all she really has to do is pull a trigger. Falco grabs her at the very last second as she ascends to try and save her, and uses the excuse that he should inherit the armored titan instead of the real reason he's doing all this, which of course he likes her and he wants to save her from becoming a titan. But right now, he kind of wants to save her from being killed by her own stupidity and, and arrogance. And they end up boarding and catching everyone by surprise. And this is the moment that I was not prepared for. Uh, despite, you know, that, that pit in my stomach. Um, I knew something. I knew this was going to happen in my core. I knew. But uh, Gabby ends up shooting Sasha right through the chest. Um, and she almost gets another round off on John before Falco toggles her to get her to stop. I mean, the bullet whizzes right past his head um, because he hesitates to shoot her because she's a kid, even though she just shot one of his best friends right in front of him. Um, then the scouts just start beating the shit out of them, uh, just absolutely enraged at what Gabby just did. Um, there's already a, a 10 hours version of just that scene, um, if you need some catharsis for it. But for a lot of people, I think um, this is going to be completely irredeemable on Gabby's part. Sasha was a fan favorite character for the entire series, and uh, Gabby is just as stubborn as Aaron was. She has just as many of the character flaws that made people annoyed with Aaron. Couple that with killing a beloved character. <clears throat> yeah, there's for a lot of people, there's no coming back from this. There's nothing she can do, no way that she can develop to make them get on board with Gabby. Please don't blame me for saying this, though. Because Sasha was one of my favorites um, in my last video. I even pointed out what a bad bitch she was for uh, shooting through that uh, armor covering to help cripple the Cart Titans turrets. Um, that She was absolutely instrumental in helping make all that stuff happen. Um, despite all that, I do think that uh, Gabby was, was justify, justified in what she did. I think the scouts were justified in how they felt and acted, but so was Gabby. I mean, she witnessed her two best friends, along with almost every single person who was ever nice to her, killed right in front of her eyes. Um, and the people that did it to her, uh, she was taught up to this point, were nothing but devils who lacked any sort of morals or any, you know, moral compass or anything like that. She's an indoctrinated child soldier who, just in her mind, had all the propaganda she was fed verified as a fact. Um, it's no wonder she would do something like this. If she was physically capable, um, you know, there's just no limit to the stuff that she would have done to them. And it's perfectly understandable when you look at it from that perspective. Doesn't mean you have to like the character, doesn't mean you have to accept uh, what she did, but, but from a psychological standpoint, <clears throat> it makes complete sense how she ended up based on where she started. She tells them she's following Zeke's will, and that true aliens will curse them from beyond the grave if they kill her, that they're following their war chief, and you know that they can tell this to their ringleader. To which John replies, well, why don't you speak to him yourself? Obviously, we think he's talking about Aaron, which he, he probably partially is, but um, revealing, I think, the biggest plot twist of the entire episode. Maybe even the season so far. Um, one, of, It's definitely up there for the whole series, I'm not gonna lie. Um, not only is Zeke still alive, but he is openly working with Paradise. 
even remarks to Levi what a good actor he is for how badly he wants to kill Zeke. He had me convinced. Levi tells him he saves the best bite for last, signaling he has no intention of letting Zeke live past his usefulness. But apparently, this is how Paradise was able to pull everything off. Now, I'm not as sure about them getting help from other countries, but we'll see soon enough if that's a play too. But for this operation though, both Onion Capone and the Bearded Soldier we saw, Trap, Peak, and Galliard, were Marlene defectors. The Bearded Soldier turned out not to be Armin like I thought, but it was a female follower of Zeke. <clears throat> this also explains how they got the blimp. They stole it from Marley right under their noses, and Aaron's intel was so perfect for the scouts to act on. Uh, Peak recalls seeing the female soldier who trapped them before and was interested in her as a follower of Zeke, um, possibly already piecing together how this all happened because she was on the very first um, scout ship that was sent to Paradise. She was sent on the very first expedition ship that never came back, along with Onyan Capone. So the group kind of discusses some of the things that went wrong. Um, you know, people start are, are talking back and forth. Um, one of the things that Zeke seemed irritated about was the fact that Peek and Galliard managed to join in the fight. Um, Yelena, who's the um, follower of Zeke, the one that was wearing the beard disguise, um, she asserts she assures Zeke that she did trap them and was unsure of how they escaped. And that's when an astonished Gabby and Falco are brought into the room. So Zeke says there were some miscalculations. Um, when asked who the kids are, Zeke says miscalculations. Safe to say, their entire world was just turned upside down right after it was just upended completely. Aaron's told the only reason any scouts died was because he left Paradise and made himself into a hostage. And this doesn't seem to phase him, which Hanji actually calls out. Um, and Zeke replies that their deaths will be repaid with the saved lives of Eldians as they will finally be independent. Not to mention they now not only have the Founding and Attack Titans, but also the Warhammer slash Beast Titan and a Titan with Royal Blood. And that's when Connie enters the room and delivers the devastating news. Sasha has died. Aaron can't say goodbye because he's tied up, but everyone from her training class, they already ran out when they were told that she was shot, um, but it cuts back to them, and I think the animators here did an incredible job just capturing the raw emotions on everyone's faces as they're mourning her. I mean, Aaron and Mikasa are like screaming and crying. There's tears falling on her, and it cuts to Aaron. He asks if they if she had any last words, which Connie tells him she said meat, and Aaron remembers the time that she snuck meat for everyone um, to have and how obsessed with it she was. So when he hears those were her last words, he's, his facade breaks for a second and he cracks a smile and kind of chuckles to me kind of in a way where it, like he's thinking like, of course, that would be the last thing that Sasha said. And of course, this comes off as extremely callous, almost like he was laughing. I mean, he kind of was for a second, um, but it's, it almost looked to the scouts like he was laughing that his friend died. But it's the first legitimate display of emotion we've seen from Aaron so far this season. Um, Aaron's laughing also does seem to turn into frustration, kind of grinds his teeth like he's struggling to really keep his emotions in check, and John tells him that the only reason Sasha died is because he dragged the scouts into this. And he grinds his teeth even harder, looks like he's really trying to keep a lid on things right now. So <clears throat> really good uh, character development for Aaron here. He is still a human being, but, you know, he he feels he is doing something very specific and it has nothing to do with anybody from Paradise anymore. He seems to be kind of in his own world right now, but uh, that is where the episode leaves off. Like every single one this season, tons of twists and gut punches right in the feels. Yeah, this has just been, and I feel like we're just getting started here. There's going to be more major character deaths. It's the final season, and, you know, I haven't felt this scared for all the main characters in season one, really. Um, like, anybody could go at just any time. Um, but that was kind of the draw, I, I think, of this show. But anyways, that's going to do it for today's video. If you like this video, please give it a like and a comment. Helps out a lot. What did you like about it? Was there anything I didn't talk about that you really wanted me to cover? Or anything you want me to cover in a future video any theories you'd like to see me craft about this and make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any future videos I post every single day mostly gameplay and anime discussion but let me know if there's any other anime you'd like to see me cover anything like that at all and as always thank you for watching